Sometimes it seems like geneticists speak their own language. And it's true, a lot of it is fairly technical, but there are a few basic terms that will get you most of the way. One de definition of genetics is the study of genes. And so what is a gene? After last week, you should have an intuitive idea, but let's go ahead and define it formally. A gene is an element of heredity And this element of heredity has to have two important properties. First, it is transmitted from parents to offspring. And second, it must influence one or more hereditary traits. And this was the way that Mendel defined a gene. However, now we know that chemically, a gene is actually a sequence of nucleotides along a molecule of DNA. We also know that not all copies of a gene have the same DNA sequence. We call alternative forms of genes alleles. Right, so an allele is one particular form or one, uh, one particular alternative form of a gene. And if it's a protein coding gene, then different alleles might code for different amino acid sequences. Or if um, the difference is a silent mutation, they may have exactly the same amino acid sequence. Another thing that we know that Mendel did not is that genes are carried on chromosomes, right? And a chromosome is simply a molecule of DNA that carries genes. In eukaryotes, like humans, like plants, these chromosomes are linear pieces of DNA. And in prokaryotes, like bacteria, they are often circular pieces of DNA. Finally, the physical position of a gene on a chromosome is called a locus. Now in higher organisms, like humans, each cell, other than reproductive cells, doesn't contain one copy of each chromosome, it contains two, right? One copy that came from one parent and one copy that came from the other parent. And these two different copies of the same chromosome with the same genes are called homologous chromosomes. Right, and so homologous chromosomes are the same chromosome, but they carry different alleles, potentially. And so these are some terms to kind of get us started here. And now we're going to kind of integrate a bunch of these terms together by looking at one of the most important connections in all of genetics, which is the connection between genotype and phenotype. And the definition of genotype is a little tricky.
The definition of genotype is a little tricky because its meaning is context dependent. When we talk about an organism's genotype, we're talking about the entire set of that organism's genetic material, right? So all of the genes in an organism. However, when we're just talking about a particular locus, it can also mean which allele or alleles are at that particular locus. So here's a concrete example, right? The locus that determines your blood type, um, be that blood type A or B or O, is called the ABO locus. Makes sense, doesn't it? And so there are three alleles that are possible at that locus. Those are IA, IB, and little i. And so a person's genotype at the ABO locus could be big IA, big IA, for example, right? Because there are two homologous chromosomes, and so there's one of these alleles on one chromosome and one of these alleles on the other chromosome. Or that person's, a person's genotype could be IB slash little i, right? And if a person has two copies of the same allele, we say that that person is homozygous. At that locus. And if a person has two different alleles at that locus, we say that person is heterozygous. And a quick side note here, common point of confusion. Even if there are many copies of a gene, right, the ABO locus has, I'm, I'm sorry, many different versions of a particular gene. So the ABO locus has three different possible configurations, right, three possible alleles. But even if, like, there are some loci that have 10 different alleles, each individual only has two of those alleles at a maximum, right? They have two physical spots for one of these ABO genes, and so they can only have two, either one or two of the possible alleles at that spot. Loci that have different alleles, that have a high variation throughout a population, we call these variant loci, these places where uh, vari uh, genetic variation is common, we call these loci polymorphic. Right, so a polymorphic locus is a locus with high variation. Finally, if an organism's genotype is all of the genes, then that organism's phenotype is all of the measurable traits of an organism. And it's important to note that there is not a one-to-one -one correspondence here, right? Complex traits such as height um, are influenced by multiple genes. The last folks who looked at height found over 300 genes that affect a person's height. And we'll talk about how these kinds of studies are done in a few weeks. Second, some genes influence multiple traits. For example, the pigment that makes skin brown is called melanin, and the genes in the melanin synthesis pathway affect skin tone, but they also affect eye color and hair color and, and, and those kinds of things. These kinds of multiple effects we call pleiotropy. Right, pleiotropy is when one gene affects multiple traits. And finally, as we discussed last week, genes aren't the only thing that impact traits, right? The environment also plays a major role.
So now that we've got some of the important um, terminology under our belt, let's go ahead and get back to the major question. How do we find genetic differences between individuals and then start to connect those differences to phenotypes? And to understand that, we're actually going to discuss some really widely used methods for analyzing DNA, but in turn, those require a deeper understanding of the molecular structure of DNA, and we're going to turn to that next.